That's to me the magical part is when you see somebody maybe step out of their shell and go somewhere they didn't expect to go and just really connect with somebody at a deep level. And that's what it's all about. Scratch Entrepreneur, true stories of remarkable people who dropped everything to turn an idea into a healthy, profitable business. We talk a lot on this podcast about building tribes, groups of customers that love your product, love your company, and feel like they're part of something special because, well, they are. The tribal metaphor has always worked in my mind for two primary reasons. One, if you have a community of raving fans, then you must be doing something right. And two, it's pretty easy to tell whether you actually have a community of raving fans, whether you have a tribe or you don't. Our guest today is part of a movement, a tribe that's made up of a community of millions of impassioned and empowered women who believe very simply that equity is not too much to expect. She, like so many other women, has decided that sitting back and watching is not an option. So she founded Be Golden, a business with the mission of supporting and empowering women of all shapes, sizes, colors, and creed. In our conversation, she shares how Be Golden came to be, talks about the evolution of feminism and why the Be Golden Conference attracts women from across the country to come together and celebrate what makes each of them leaders, innovators, and revolutionaries. We're glad you joined us. Hey, this is Jeremy Goodrich, owner of Shine Insurance Agency and your host for the Scratch Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm here today with Sarah Perfetti. She is a, a, one of the founding members of the Be Golden Conference, and we're going to talk today about the conference. It's happening October 4th through October 6th, so if you're listening to this before that time, you can still get tickets and, and connect with that conference. So Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. So Be Golden is all about women's empowerment. It's empowering women of all kinds. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that came up? How did that spark start for you? So the whole concept of a women's empowerment conference came when me, Chelsea Sanders, and the third co-founder, Kate Keith, who's no longer a part of Be Golden, but shout mm -hmm. out to her because she did help found it. Yeah. Um, we were all having dinner here in town at the Owlery, and we were talking about doing something that would give back to women on a big scale. And it was at the time of the last presidential election, soon after our president said something about grabbing a woman somewhere. Yeah. And soon after that, there was a rally for Trump. Um, I can't remember. It was in a swing state, and it was at a big convention center, and NPR went and interviewed a woman either before or after this rally. And they had asked the woman you know, after Trump's remarks about, alleged remarks about women, like, why are you here as a woman to support Trump? And her response was something on, along the lines of, well, as a woman, I can say this, and I don't feel like women should hold office. I don't feel like women should own businesses. She was like, uh, women are very emotional, men are more logical, and I really think that women should just be the support of men to lead this country. And I heard that, and I was like, "That there's something so wrong with our society to have somebody voting age say something like that. That's so upsetting, and I'm not going to dig into politics about that, but just the idea that a woman can't lead was really upsetting to me. So the three of us are sitting and having dinner and thinking about what could we do for women with all of this stuff going on. Um, so many negative things about women, women having body positivity issues, and not to say that men don't have these same things, but we're all women. So we're sitting there and we were thinking, what can we do that would provide a high impact opportunity for women? And we were initially thinking like, oh, we could do retreats, like 10 to 15 people retreats, go around the country, surrounded around a certain topic, bring in some speakers because we're not really the experts on these things, yeah. bring in like an expert speaker. And then we move from, well, that's only like 
you know, 10 to 15 people a time, how many of these are we going to have to do throughout the year to really make a big impact? And then it went to, well, what about we have a conference or a festival or something? So Be Golden came about. So Be Golden is really the umbrella company for the Be Golden Women's Empowerment Conference, things to come in the future. We're not ready to say all that yet, but right now we have the Women's Empowerment Conference, and we're so proud of it. We're going into our second year. So it really came about as a way to connect women, to provide community, mentorship, give women the tools. And that's our mission, to give women the tools to spark the change they want to see in themselves and the world around them. So we want to impact the person on an individual level so that they could be good for themselves, thereby giving back to their community in whatever way they define that. The 2016 election and some of the things that came after were certainly uh, a spark, but it isn't the beginning of when women have been either put in or kind of self put themselves in a certain spot in society. How do you see the evolution of women empowerment and women's roles? Roles is such a loaded word, though, yeah. in our culture and how it's changing. Well, I think we really stand, like at least for Be Golden, that in gender equity. So we're taking the gender, female gender, and recognize that there are more than two genders. So if somebody wants to come to be golden as an ally of women or the feminine experience, a man or a trans guy, anybody who wants to support women and the female experience could come. I'm not like a gender studies expert. My Actually, my sister is. She got her PhD in gender studies and female literature. But I think with social media and just like quick access to video and online discussions, a lot of issues, not just um, feminism and and movements like that, but any kind of social movement um, has been easily accessible to people. So I think the idea, I'm not sure what wave it is, like the second or third wave of feminism, the idea of burning bras and armpit hair and rallies is a little bit different from what feminism looks like today. For Be Golden, we're just looking at equity, like having women be on an equal position in whatever way you're talking about that, whether it's financial or just holding, like I think something around, I think it's two or 4% women are of the Fortune 500 companies, it's two to 4% are the CEOs. Now there's a problem with that. So it's not just the money that women are making, but it's also the positions of power. Look at our representatives, you know, majority of them are men. And we're also trying to be a space that includes other minorities within like the the umbrella of women. So we're trying to have a space for queer women and women of color and other people who aren't often recognized because feminism is often thought of as a white, straight, heteronormative experience. So, I mean, I am a white woman. I'm not straight, but I'm trying to expose and, you know, that's what we're doing. We're trying to have other women have their voices and give them platforms to be heard and things that I can't maybe necessarily relate to because of who I am. I think the equity piece is is the heart there that you described, which is, you know, we can have conversations about all the different pieces that make someone who they are and mm-hmm. different or the same than me or you. And those are all fine conversations to dig deep into as long as at some basic level, we're all on the same playing field and we're all ultimately just living this human experience in a mm-hmm. way that that navigates it together. You know, yeah. differences are one thing. But clear bias is, I think, a completely different experience. And it sounds like one of the pieces that you all are trying to address is simply to uh, back that bias off if and ultimately get rid of it, you know. Yeah. And give people, you know, I might not 100 percent disagree with every single speaker's perspective on life, but Um, I feel like it's important to give a platform to people with different opinions. So, yeah. A personal experience, though, Mackenzie, my wife, went last year and yeah. really enjoyed every element of it. She felt like she could show up and there were all these other wonderful women of all different backgrounds. You've done a wonderful job of bringing folks of all different backgrounds and purposefully creating diversity in the space. And just were powerful speakers telling their stories, sometimes sad, sometimes amazingly happy, yeah. off, always powerful. 
And just she came home each day telling with all these stories, with new friends, all this engagement that had happened from business owners to women who just wanted to be excited about their life to women who were dealing with some kind of struggle that they were trying to get through and get past and needed a community of other women to support them. So she loved it. Yeah, that's and, like what you just said is like that warms my heart because that's exactly what we want from Be Golden. Everyone's going to come in wanting something that might be different from the next person and leaving with something. But that's the whole idea is just to really create a safe and inclusive space for all different types of ideas and women to meet each, find a place, common ground to meet each other somewhere, which even if they're on different political spectrums, like at least they could find that human connection in each other and support each other. And that that is what happened last year. I mean, there were people who were so different from each other, but then they had both gone through like sexual abuse or something. So they related on that and all of their differences were washed out the window and they could really connect, yeah. cry, hug. And that's the kind of thing that we want to do. We want to build community through that. Yeah. And I think you're doing that. It, that just grows. And it's a space that Obviously, I don't have a ton of experience, but last year, my wife's experience was just, it's a space that's really safe for women to engage in this conversation. That's the goal. So uh, we're going to go to break really quickly. And then when we come back, we're going to dig into politics just for a second, only really because just like big things happening in the political world right now, mm -hmm. uh, the Me Too movement and some of the uh, stuff going on with Supreme Court. I just wanted to get your sense on it and where B. Golden kind of falls into how you handle these really important pieces of the female world, I guess, uh -huh. or just the world as a whole that women are just having to experience. And then we'll get into some of the speakers you're having, what their life stories are a little bit, and get us pumped for the conference this coming weekend. Yep. Can a guy be a feminist? Like, yeah. I think that I've been you know, pro the women's movement for as long as I've been an adult. My dad's an evangelical Christian minister, and so I'd been sort of inundated in yeah. that world. And then I turned 16, I heard Pink Floyd. I was just like, this isn't me, you know? And so yeah. this, uh, this huge shift in me as a human being happened. I'd say I'm the same person at 42 as I was at 16 from a philosophical perspective. Yeah. Like it all happened right there. One piece of it was really... I've never loved being a white male, you know, and it's like all the baggage that, it, which sounds yeah. so stupid. It's like, I've never loved being the one who doesn't <laughs> have to deal with all the bullshit. You know, you like can't say that because it's stupid and it's not a legitimate, I don't connect with that, the culture of it. Or maybe it's just there isn't, for me, there isn't a culture. Yeah. Well, and that's why we say this is open to, we say women and our allies. So allies yeah. could be anybody who supports women. Yeah. If it's a dad coming because he has young daughters or a husband coming for his wife or a single guy who's friends with a bunch of women or sees things going on in his workplace and just wants to sit back and learn or ask questions and engage. Like that's, that's really the essence of it. Because it is a women's empowerment conference, but that's why we say women's empowerment. So who wants to empower women? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people probably do, hopefully. Well, and, and allies like, for all groups of people who are trying to get rid of bias and get rid of, you know, some of the ugly stuff that's a part of our culture and, and yeah. human nature. Like the allies have to be there. They can open doors more easily. I mean, is that yeah. just a reality? Well, collaboration, or? I think, is just a healthy, ha like yeah. a good thing. It's getting more people on your side, mm -hmm. you know, whatever your side is. And if yeah. it's like women's empowerment and equity. Yeah. And going back to what you said about can a guy be a feminist? Am I a feminist? Like, I think anybody, just simply feminism, I know like theoretically there are different, I think there's four different waves of feminism. Yeah. The first wave is women's rights, you know, women get, getting the right to vote. Yeah, And right. then the second wave, I think, was like the 60s, 70s time, mm -hmm. which is often viewed as what feminism is. The burning your I bras. I think kind of mistakenly, yeah. but, mm -hmm. but definitely like an important movement. And I think mm -hmm. this might be like the third wave where now it's just like feminism is what you make of it. So if you know, me dressing like this, mm -hmm. if that's feminine, then that's feminine, you know? Right. Yeah. If you saying like, I want my wife to, you know, be proud of how she looks and, you know, come to work with confidence, working in maybe an insurance 
running an insurance agency yeah. might be a male dominant business. Well, yeah, you know, definitely thumbs up to her for being in that kind of, you know, playing field. And then you're just yeah. like, we want to be equal. Like, I think anybody who's giving a thumbs up to equity and women are not equal right now. And it's not women going above men. It's like equal, you know, yeah. we're bringing equity. It's fair playing field. Well, I think another thing that gets confusing with feminism and the term femme is that some people then we're thinking it kind of on the gender binary. So only acknowledging that there's men and women. Mm -hmm. And that has been hard for us to come up with our language and how we want to communicate this because it's a women's empowerment conference. But if you don't identify as a man or a woman and you're somewhere around that, somewhere else on the spectrum, we want this to be a conference for you too. But we're really taking the edge of or the side of like we're here to empower women. And mm -hmm. whoever you are, if you empower, if you support women, then you are part of Be Golden too. It sounds like the highest level of your aspirations are equity. Per yeah. Period. Yep. You know, and then You're exactly spot on. We get into for your this conference, females is your focus mm -hmm. and people who identify with female or who are allies to females or whatever that means mm -hmm. to the person who's seeing Be Golden yeah. as a conference. And it seems like every phase that you described is an attempt towards equity. Yep, exactly. And, and yeah. so no attempt is going to be perfect and no attempt is necessarily going to succeed 100%. Mm -hmm. But when you see women getting the right to vote, obviously that's a huge piece that mm -hmm. changed the way that our culture works. When you see women now saying in the 60s, look, we're, we're not just going to be the housewife if we yeah. don't want to be. We're not going to just, you know, make way less than a man doing the exact same job. Here's the things that we're saying we are we want fixed and we want them now. Yep. And that's just asking for equity, you know, yeah. and that's reasonable. And then now with women's movements at this phase and the Me Too and, yeah. and all the things that are going on, they're saying, look, there's some ugly stuff in the closet still and it's not OK. And no yeah. one should have to keep something quiet that happened to them because some man felt empowered to do something terrible. Mm -hmm. So that's the next phase. It's like if every phase is we just want our lives to be as good as anybody yeah. else's, like it seems pretty reasonable. And not to be taken advantage of. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I wanted to just real quickly get your take because in the political world, there's a huge thing going on in Supreme Court with Christine Blasey Ford coming out and really telling her survivor story in front of the world and certainly the United States. How are you all handling the the Me Too perspective on women's rights? Yeah. So looking at our schedule, we have made sure to program uh, some sessions that reflect that, that provide a safe space for women to who may have been or know somebody who has been affected by a man violating her or a person violating her, really. It could be another woman violating her. So we have two sessions that fall under the Me Too movement topics. Um, we have a session called Sexual Abuse and Recovery, and we're bringing in a speaker from New York who has suffered that personally, and it took her, she learned through her own experience how to m navigate through that and recover, not just tolerate it, but actually recover from it and become the healthy person she wanted to be. And she wants to give back by creating a space for other people to do that. Yeah. And so we've made sure that anybody coming to that topic, they don't necessarily have to like out themselves, I guess, to say like, I have been a victim of sexual abuse if they're not ready to, right. but maybe their best friend has or their sister has or their mom has, and they really aren't sure how to recover with them in that process mm -hmm. because it affects the victim, obviously, but it has a trickle effect on the relationships outside of them. Yeah. So this workshop is really structured to do that. It's to talk about that. It's an open, we call use the term living room style conversations mm -hmm. so that it does feel relaxed, comfortable, um, safe for people to share their stories if they want or sit back and listen and just learn. Yeah. And then the other um, session that we have is a six minute short film called Lamb. And it's about women help pretty much escorting other women to be 
abused by a specific man. So it's a short film, it's six minutes, but it really will charge the conversation that follows it. Mm-hmm. And it's a Q&A with the film director and the film producer talking about it, Me Too and talking about you know current political issues that women are affected by that. So we've created a space that there are options for people to attend sessions that talk about that. Yeah, it seems like if you've experienced violence in any way, especially yeah. a violence that you feel like you can't share, yeah, you feel like you can't share, you feel like you can't prove, like there's so many pieces to that particular type of violence that women experience. And to be able to, even if you don't want to tell your story, to be able to hear someone else's story, yeah, to be able to know that your inner conflicts and inner, you're not the alone in yeah. that process. And then if you do decide you want to address it however you choose to address yeah. it, you know, whether that's coming out and trying to address the perpetrator and deal with the situation or just deal with it inside yourself so that you can move on with your life with peace or mm-hmm. change the culture in some way or change the laws in some way, whatever it is, yeah. knowing you're not alone. Yeah. And knowing that your choice to even stay silent is not like not wrong, I, right? Like yeah. you, if you feel like you've done something wrong, then that's almost the worst part of it. it yeah, and that just, happens. You know? That's that's not uncommon, unfortunately. Yeah, that a lot of victims of sexual violence do feel like it's their fault. Like, was I provoking that person, or mm-hmm. what did I do? What is it about me that made that person do that? You know, and I think there's a lot of guilt in that. Yeah. And it's also like sexual violence is a very personal thing, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's very, it's embarrassing, it's humiliating, it could be painful, like, Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that make a person who's been a victim of that, a woman who's been a victim of that, like not want to share and just lock it down. And with the Me Too movement, so many people have come out and admitted that that's online, like that's, you know, out in the abyss, like this is going to be, you know, a physical space where Mm -hmm. people could move to that next level. And some people might not be comfortable with it. Like you were Mm -hmm. saying, they may not even want to go to that because they're not at that place yet. But I think by programming something that recognizes that is enough. It's a signal that says, hey, we're here. We recognize you. We've created a space for you. You may not want to be near this because you're not ready for it, but that's okay. Like we're recognizing that. And then there might be people who've maybe recovered it and they want to come and share their story to Mm -hmm. be a light for other people who are going through it. That's one element of the conversation. There's obviously lots of different elements. So when we come back, we're going to dig into some of your speakers, where they come from. You're going to tell a couple of their stories so we Mm -hmm. can get pumped about the conference and uh, go from there. Does that sound good? Perfect. Okay, cool. Hey, we're back with Sarah Perfetti of the Be Golden Conference. I wanted to dig in a little bit or just ask you to tell stories, really. Like, can you tell us a couple of stories of the folks who are choosing to speak, what they're going to talk about and kind of get us pumped for it? I'm so excited about all of the topics we have. So for Be Golden as the co-founder, I do a lot of the background stuff, the strategy. And so I'm doing a lot of the programming. Mm -hmm. We have a whole team of volunteers who've helped like solicit and ask speakers to come to be golden who've connected us with connections that led to other connections. And I've personally made a point to speak to about 99% of our speakers have Mm -hmm. at least a 30 minute phone conversation or in-person conversation if they happen to be local and getting all of those stories and hearing where they come from, even if it's a topic that I'm like, oh, I'm not really doing that. So, you know, this is a topic for other people, but then meeting them and learning their stories have just been so amazing. So I'm so excited to see all these people here, like crunched in the three days and then also see how they interact with all of our attendees and the relationships that come and like really for Be Golden being in its second year, we're still small. So the positive side of it being small, one of the biggest benefits if you're a speaker or an attendee is that you really do get that like intimate connection with people throughout the weekend because 
all of our sessions are designed to have that openness and intimacy. So they're designed to be between 10 and 25 people. So we're not going to have like 200 people sitting there. There's going to be like max 25. We intentionally de designed it that way. Everything's in smaller venues around town. Yeah. So you really can't go beyond that size. So we were talking about some of the more heavier things yeah, yeah. Um, before the break and some of the lighter topics. We have one that's called Unleash Your Joy Potential, and it's led by a local life coach. Mm -hmm. And that's really just going to be a lighthearted and fun workshop for people. It's going to be very interactive for attendees. So everything yeah. is like designed that you're not going to be lectured yeah. at for 60 minutes. You're really going to move around. They're going to be, you know, learning things. You're going to take quizzes. You're going to talk to people. You're going to share your story if you're comfortable. She's not going to be doing this for Be Golden. She also does laugh yoga. So on the lighter <laughs> side, that's going to yeah. be a really awesome thing. We also have a topic called communicate better in 10 words or less. So it's like communication, whether it's for your company or just like maybe for your relationship at home, learning yeah. how to communicate with different people, or if you manage a team, how to communicate with that team. One of my favorite people who's coming to speak, she spoke last year, her name is Kristen Olson. And it's kind of like a long story of how I met Kristen, but Kristen has just been such a gem in connecting me and Chelsea with so many people. Cool. A lot of our attendees are somehow connected with Kristen Olson, and mm. we call her Ko because that's her nickname. But Ko's background, uh, she she lives in Denver. She played lacrosse in college, so she's an athlete. Mm. Chelsea and I were both swimmers in college, so we all have that with Kristen. We're about the same age. She's involved in so many things. She has lots of side hustles, which I could totally relate to. <laughs> yeah, And totally. so on the personal level, like KO and I get along really well. And yeah. she is a part of a lot of things. One of them is she has KO Alliance, which is a bunch of brand influencers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them happen, happen to be in athletics, athletic gear, health foods, like kind of that realm, yeah. the health and wellness realm. And then she also... Um, started this thing after the election called Formation Tribe. And it's a connection. It's just an online thing. There's no like membership. You have to be invited, but it's a connection of women throughout all over the U.S. That's cool. yeah. And one of the women who's not going to be at Be Golden this year, we were trying to get her, but she's in training. Um, mm -hmm. She won a silver medal. Her name is Lauren Gibbs. Mm -hmm. We call her Gibbs. But Gibbs won the silver medal and the bobsled team this year in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So KO has connected us with so many people. We have like I said, about eight people, eight different speakers who are kind of like, if we drew a chart of all the connections, like somehow a lot of them lead to KO. Yeah. We have five tracks at Be Golden. Yeah. So all of our speaker sessions fall under actually at least two of the tracks mm -hmm. because they all fall under leadership and then usually something else. Yeah. So we have brands and marketing, yep. and that's really uh, dedicated for people who are maybe they're freelancers or they're working for a small company and they want to learn, you know, what is branding? Is it just a, a lot of people mistakenly think of it as just a logo, but it's a lot more than that. It's the way mm. you communicate your business. Yeah. It's your motto. It's your fonts. It's your colors. It's what kind of presence, what kind of market. So we have um, sessions under that topic. So brands and marketing, then mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, which has a lot to do with like, you know, your podcast. Being a business owner. Yeah, yeah being absolutely. a business owner. Yep. And we have a lot of women who are business owners and mm -hmm. who've been doing it for 20 plus years and some who are just like thinking about it. And it's really in the idea stage. Mm -hmm. And then we have the third topic is health and wellness. So health and wellness isn't just uh, the physical part of it, but it's also the mental and emotional aspect of that. Yeah. And we have workouts on Saturday morning and Sunday morning at 8 a.m., Saturday morning, a local group called Echo Dance Company, which is really so perfectly aligned with the Be Golden mission. It's really to showcase all female bodies, whether you're tiny or big or traditional looking dancer or not, mm -hmm. whatever color you are, um, it's, it's an expression. So we're going to do like a movement that's not like a hard, intense workout. It'll be open for all people like cool. whatever yeah. fitness level. And then on Saturday, we have a, a P90X class. So it's a little bit more maybe fitness heavy, yeah. um, but it's going to be tailored for people who may not be um, used to being in the gym. Yeah. So 
a lot of people go to conferences and kind of get off their healthy habits yeah, absolutely. and eat too much, drink too much. Like you're sitting, you're listening the whole time. So we wanted to make sure that people got their, there was time carved out for people to get workouts in. Yeah. And so that's um, health and wellness. And then our next one is leadership. All the women who are coming to the conference are leaders. So yeah. everybody somehow falls under the leadership category. And then our final track is social impact. Mm -hmm. And social impact encompasses social justice, community building, nonprofit management, and advocacy. So all of those things kind of lumped under uh, social impact. Cool. That sounds awesome. When you were done with last year, what was one thing that sticks out in your mind that, that came out of the conference for you? Yeah, for me, the magic is after having put in so much time into making sure we have topics that would be attractive for all different types of people. Mm -hmm. And the magic for me last year was... I kind of alluded to it earlier, but there is a woman who is very conservative. She's from a rural town. She has a, a ranch. She is a cattle rancher. And her sitting in the room with a person who was a high fashion model who identified as androgynous and modeled for menswear and women's wear, was part of New York Fashion Week, lives in New York. So we have like the total opposite people, a yeah. person who is extremely liberal, a person who is really conservative, a person who is fitness savvy, a person who really isn't. Like in every way that you could think about it, the two of them were really different. Yeah. But they were sitting in one of the sessions that I was in, and it was a very interactive session. And the two of them like shared and connected and had tears. And just to see that two people who are seemingly so different yeah. are so much actually alike. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much commonality there. It opened my eyes to yeah. see that. And I think it did the same thing for each of them. And that's to me the magical part is when you see somebody maybe step out of their shell and go somewhere they didn't expect to go and just really connect with somebody at a deep level. And that's what it's all about. Take 30 seconds a minute and describe to someone who's listened to this episode and thought, you know, I want to I want to go to this conference. Or even if you listen to it after this year's conference happened, you know, looking at going next year or just connecting with the people that were there? How can folks connect with Be Golden? Yeah, a bunch of ways. Um, first, our website, begoldenstaygolden.com. And we have all of the information there. We have, we have presence on all the social media platforms. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the main ones, uh, all of those handles are on our website. It's Be Golden, Stay Golden is the handle to follow us. And that's where we promote all of our information. We also launched in April a workshop series. So aside from the conference we're doing, if you think of them as kind of like a mini conference, we're doing that around in different cities, not just in Bloomington. Cool. So we're coming to where the speakers live and collaborating with them to put on a topic that's focused around one thing. So there's other things outside of the conference. If people happen to miss it this year, they could pop into one of our workshops check it out, and then maybe come to the conference in 2019. Sarah, it's been awesome just chatting with you. Yeah, it's I been I think great. that what y'all are doing is really amazing, and I love seeing tribes come together, Yeah, you know, and I think that's what you're doing here is building a tribe and moving folks forward in a, a really awesome way. So thank you for taking the time to join us on Scratch Entrepreneur. Yeah, thank you so much. Special thanks to Sarah Perfetti for taking the time to share the Be Golden story with us. Contributors to this episode include me, Jeremy Goodrich, the host and producer of the podcast. Music is by Mark Vinton. Editing is by Christopher Lang. If you enjoyed this podcast, there's a couple of things we'd love for you to do right now. First, please subscribe to Scratch Entrepreneur on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you listen to podcasts. While you're there, please do give our show a review. If you enjoyed the podcast, feel free to share it with friends on social media or wherever. Finally, please consider joining our Scratch Entrepreneur Facebook group. If you are a business owner and you'd like to bounce things off of other people, we are all there and ready to listen and share insights and ideas. Until the next time, we truly appreciate you listening.